I want to talk to you about a couple of things that have to do with a couple of emails I received. This is going to be a short video and we'll get started right after this. Hey! Hello there. I have two emails that I want to discuss with you. One of them is somebody who wrote and asked me a couple questions. From One is from a subscriber whose name is Christy. I actually talked to her on the phone the other day and I talked to her about this. It's not a real big issue, but this is something that I think is important for you to know about. She says, uh, hi Don, glad to finally write to you. I've been a fan for several months. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I know how that goes. I mean, you're, there's uh, 5,989 or something like that other people that agree with you on that. Uh, wonderful information, very entertaining. My husband and I are planning to retire to Monta in March of 2024. We take a, took a tour of the whole country in November 21 and now are coming back for a closer look at Monta. So on to her question, she said she had some medical questions. Getting old does, does have its problems. I saw your video on Dr. Juan Fernandez. Dr. Juan Fernandez is the orthopedic surgeon that operated on my foot and he also helped me when I broke my, my little toe when I first came here. Fantastic orthopedic surgeon, probably one of the best in Ecuador in my opinion. But she, what she wanted to know is, uh, she wanted to know if I still recommend him. I said, yes, I do. And if you mind imparting some personal info, could you tell me how much your surgery costs? If not, I understand. I think I've told people before to have my toe operated on was 3,500 bucks. Uh, the insurance company only gave me $600 and some change. We tried to pull a fast one and it didn't work or I would have gotten a lot more coverage and I'm not going to go into details about that. But the surgery to, to do, I mean it was a major operation on my toe. Re literally replaced a joint in my big toe on my right foot and replaced it with a joint that was made from a 3D printer. He charged me 3,500 bucks. That included everything. Anesthesias, anesthesiologists, medicine, the surgical center, everything. And, and also included another surgeon that helped him. But anyway, she said, do you need to see a PCP doctor first and get a referral to go see a specialist there? No, you do not. I'm not saying that you don't have to, probably wouldn't hurt at least you can get a referral you know but I know how it works in the states you know you, you have to go to your primary care doctor and get a referral assume that everybody's in your network and all that stuff and get a referral and then you know then you got to wait you know for a number of days or weeks to even get to make an appointment with the damn referral you know here you, you, if let's say Dr. Garcia is your primary care physician. Ouch, I just broke my toe. Dr. Garcia, where do I go? You know, Dr. Garcia might say go to the clinic in the mall or go see a specialist, go see somebody like Dr. Fernandez. Here's his WhatsApp number. And you call him or you write to him on WhatsApp. You write to him, you write to the doctor. That's what's the beauty part about healthcare here in South America, here in Ecuador, you can contact your doctor on WhatsApp. You're not, not a nurse, not a, a front desk person, or not an insurance agent. You contact the doctor, and the doctor will write back to you just like a normal human being, and, and you'll make your appointment. She says, also, is it just call or text the WhatsApp number to make an appointment, like I just said? You'll get the WhatsApp number from your doctor or from a referral. You can get it from me. You can get it from somebody on Facebook. It doesn't make any difference, you know? You'll be able to contact your specialist. I don't care if it's a cardiologist, endocrinologist, it's a dumachata, or, you know, it doesn't make a dentist or any kind of doctor here. Most likely, you're going to get their WhatsApp number and... That's how you're going to make your appointment, okay? 
So, that takes care of that. The next one, you're going to love this. This kind of pisses me off, you know. Kathy wrote, this is a comment section on one of my videos. I don't even remember which video it was. I'm going to read her little, little part here that she wrote to me. Then I'll get to my point, okay? I came here with the intention of getting my visa once here. Okay? That's mistake number one. I hired a person recommended to me who for over a month did nothing with regards to obtaining my visa. I hired a person. Mistake number two. I am now down to less than 60 days and I and don't know if I need to go back to the U.S. to handle or whether there is an honest company person who will n know how to proceed. I took a one-year lease and I am living in Kodakachi based on the person hired who told me it was all in the process and would be fine. I have done a lot of research over the last few days when I found out she had done nothing with with the exception that I did get my FBI criminal report by email, mistake number three. I also had my fingerprint cards that I got back from her for the U.S. state criminal check, criminal check, which I was told weeks ago was done and it was not. Any advice is much appreciated. Okay, so in the first place, I don't give advice. All right, I, folks, stop asking me for advice. I, I mean, I know there's a lot of new people to the channel you don't realize and you haven't seen all 278 videos that I've posted on my experience with coming here and what it's been like for me. You'll notice that I don't give advice with one exception, okay? I will make an exception. I will give the advice to consult a professional. Okay, not another YouTuber, not Facebook, not, you know, Joe Blow from the internet, you know, some expert, you know, consult a professional. Why on earth? I'm sick and tired of hearing people, I don't want to pay that kind of money for an immigration lawyer. See the problem here that Catherine made, and Catherine, please, Forgive me, I'm not giving your last name, so nobody, hopefully nobody knows who I'm talking about, but I'm telling you, Catherine, I'm saying this with peace and love. Either you didn't know, and you didn't ask the right questions, or you listened to my videos, and you didn't pay attention, and you ignored my recommendation, or you didn't hear what I said that I did. But folks, don't hire a facilitator to do your visa work for you. My God, look at all the money you're spending to move to Ecuador from your home country. Why won't you spend 1500 bucks, talking about for a single person here, to hire a professional immigration attorney to do all your immigration work for you? You want, you want to save a few dollars? If you want to save some money, Instead of hiring that container ship to bring your your household junk down here for eight, nine, ten thousand dollars, you know, when you could just leave it all there or get rid of it or put it in storage or whatever, you know, spend the money where it's really necessary. And an immigration lawyer is necessary. If you're gonna get a visa here in Ecuador, don't screw around by hiring some friend of a friend that can do it for $400. You know what I'm saying? When I first came here, I kept thinking, hey, you know, save some money and hire a facilitator. Well, I have found out several times since then how many people have gotten so screwed by hiring a facilitator to get their visa for them. This is not something to screw around with, folks. You have a limited amount of time. You have to have your T's crossed and your I's dotted when you apply for your visa. And if you think you're gonna get in the comment section here and argue with me about that, 
Screw you. You're not, I'm not, I'll kick your comment completely out because I know what I'm talking about. You hire a professional. You hire either Gringo Visa or Equalisys. Those are the only two firms that I recommend in Ecuador. And I tell people all the time, talk to both of them and pick the one you like. They both have offices in all the major cities here now. It cost me $1,530 to get my visa, and I didn't have any trouble. None whatsoever. It was done right when it said they said they were going to do it, and I got it. I got my visa and my cedula. I used Gringo Visa. I have to admit that I did have a little problem in the beginning trying to get some answers, but the guy that Mate had working for at the time wasn't really doing a very good job. And I wrote to her and said, give me my money back. You know, well, she took care of it. She, she, she didn't have to give me my money back. She took care of the problem, and we, it got resolved. It takes a little bit of communication. I, wrote, I recommended to Kathy when she wrote this to me, I said, talk to Gringo, to Mate at Gringo Visa immediately. Let me know if you need any help. And I gave her my email address. She wrote back and said, thank you. I did, and it will take an extension and probably a trip back to the U.S. May have to give up on Ecuador as this really gave me an uncomfortable feeling and cost me time, which now will cost me more money. Catherine, I have to know, did you listen to me or anybody else before you came here? Folks, don't come here and then try to get your visa. Start that preparation before you leave your country. The FBI check, you can't be more than six months old. You gotta time things out so that you get all your documentation together and get it here in one package and get it to your immigration attorney not some friend of a friend, expert, internet expert that can save me a few bucks because you don't want to, because you're the cheap tightwad. Not saying, not saying that about you, Catherine, not, but you know what I'm saying. I'm talking to everybody. If you're going to immigrate to Ecuador and you want to get a visa here, by God, hire an attorney. Don't be an idiot. Not saying you are, Catherine. Not saying that. Don't be an idiot. Hire a professional to do this stuff for you, because this is serious business. Let me tell you something. One of the most critical things about getting your visa here is all your documentation, everything, has to be translated to Spanish. Now, I'm not talking Mexico, Mexican Spanish. I'm talking about Latin American Spanish. If, if one word in that document, if it's not right, immigration will kick it back to you, and you gotta start all over again. So don't be an idiot and screw around with getting your visa. Hire a professional, spend the money, okay? Get your paperwork together when they tell you to get it together. Pay attention to what they tell you to do, and then you'll get your visa. Simple as that, okay? Makes me mad as hell when I tell people stuff like this and then you don't listen. Don't listen to me. I know people that come here, you know, <laughs> come walking right on into Juan says, oh, I'm gonna find me a place to live now that I'm here. Don't even know where they're gonna go. You know, oh, I'll get my visa when I get there. Stupid idiot. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching this channel. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button, okay? If you didn't like it, bite me. And this time, I'm not saying that with peace and love. I mean it. If you don't like it, bite me. That's what I want to say to stupid people that don't listen. So anyway, have a great day. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.